Hello lovely people, welcome back to my channel, it's Kanisha. If you're new around here, my name is Kanisha and I create video content on business, career, lifestyle and university. So if you'd like to join me on my journey, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Today's video is all about the five books that have changed my life, or at least my perspective, and I figured now would be a great time to release this video as Christmas is around the corner, and if you like the sound of some of these books, you can even add them onto your Christmas list. The books are mainly non-fiction, and it's a mixture between self-help, personal development, and business, and so it's a nice mix of the three. In terms of the order of the books I'm gonna be talking about, it's mainly in the order that I read the books in, rather than like my favorites. So without further ado, let's talk about the first one and it's You Are A Badass, How To Stop Doubting Your Greatness and How To Start Living An Awesome Life by Jen Sanchuro. So Jen Sanchuro is a New York Times bestselling author, speaker and success coach and she wrote this book in 2013 and then I've read it for the first time in 2017. Correction, I actually listened to it as an audible for the first time in 2017. And so this book was recommended to me by a friend and it took me a while to actually come around to reading it, but I'm so glad that I did. And so You Are A Badass is a how-to guide on how to identify and change self-sabotaging beliefs and behaviours in order to start living the best possible life and become the best possible version of yourself. And so Jen Sutro writes in a very engaging way that talks about some of her own personal experiences, as well as breaking down the different ways in which sometimes we limit ourselves and we limit our own opportunities just because of the way that we're thinking. Throughout the book, she poses a lot of questions that really encourages you to dig deeper into yourself and ask like, am I not getting things that I want because of myself or because of the situation that's happening or even because of my own thoughts? And in that, you start to unpack and unravel some of the ways in which you might be preventing yourself from opportunities. So a standout quote from me in that book was this one. Our thoughts become our words, our words become our beliefs, our beliefs become our actions and our actions become our habits and our habits become our realities. And I think that pretty much says a lot in itself and as a religious person, so I'm a Christian, this reminds me of a verse in the Bible, I believe in Proverbs, where it talks about how the tongue has the power of life and death. And it's so true that our words and our thoughts have power over our lives and can really manifest things that take place within it. So when you start being cautious about that and really digging deeper into why you're thinking the way that you're thinking, you might be able to change how your reality looks around you. But of course, there are certain factors that we cannot change. I definitely do not disregard that, but I think there's a lot of opportunity to really take more ownership and control over our lives. Now, the second book I'm gonna be talking about is The Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. And you might even recognize that name, and that's because she is the author of the best-selling novel, Eat, Pray, and Love, that was published in 2006. And so there's been some time between that first book came out and the release date of The Big Magic. So in that she offers a unique insight into inspiration and also creativity. So I reckon this book is perfect for anyone who has any kind of creative interest. So whether that could be from blogging, um, maybe some creative work professionally, or photography like any kind of endeavor like that this book is fantastic because she really encourages you to uncover your strange tools which she refers to as creativity and how you then choose to express this in your life and in the world and some of the ways we might be holding ourselves back from releasing these creative endeavors out into the world so she actually has a chapter in the book that stands out to me a lot and that is her outlook on ideas so she sees ideas as these things that are floating with the universe they sort of pick up a vessel or a person that they want to like enter and that's when somebody gets a big idea so what happens in that time between getting the big idea and execution the person starts to question like should i do this maybe it's already out there in the world like what's the point in doing this and the longer they spend on sitting on this idea and not acting on it so the lack of inaction it actually leads to the idea to moving on to another vessel in order for it to be executed like to be put out properly into the world and that creates that scenario where someone has an idea they never honored it and next thing you know they're watching tv and their big idea is playing out on the screen and they're like i had that idea first well unfortunately you didn't honor it and moved on to someone who was willing to 
honor it and put it out into the world. So I thought that was a really interesting perspective into ideas and how at the end of the day ideas just move from person to person and you really should honor it when it does come to you rather than bury it and leave it to the side because it will leave you. But yeah, I highly recommend you put that on your Christmas list and check it out. If you're looking to understand your creativity and be more sustainable about it so that you can, you know, tap into that more regularly, this is the book for you. The next book that I'm gonna be talking about is The Defining Decade. So why your 20s matter and how to make the most out of it by Meg J. So like the first book, this one was highly recommended to me by a few friends and it fell perfectly in my life in terms of the fact that I'm 22, so in my early 20s. So Meg J is a clinical assistant professor at the University of Virginia and throughout her experience within the last six years, she has interviewed lots of clients and students who are in their 20s and uncovered a common pattern amongst them and from that she has sort of concluded that unlike the trend that is right now where like people talk about like your 30s are the new 20s or your life starts in the 30s she actually makes a point to say that your 20s are actually your defining decade and that all the decisions that you make within your 20s have a lasting impact on how the rest of your life is going to look like. So she splits this book up into three sections and that is work, love and mind and body and in each of these she touches on different clients and case studies that she has encountered in her career and breaks it down into ways that 20 somethings are not paying as much attention to or putting less weight on. So one of the stand up points from the book for me was actually in the perception of marriage and um, love. And so she believes that 20 somethings are not selective enough and they're not choosy in terms of who their life partners are going to be. And in that they're not realizing the impact that their partner's families will have in their relationship or whether they're actually happy in those relationships. And so the time spent in those unhappy relationships has sort of like an impact into the kind of lifelong partner you might encounter later on. Basically, it's like a lot. Like she talks a lot about love and it talks a lot about these decisions and the impacts that they have later in your life. I think that's about for me in the book was where she talked about weak ties have a greater impact on the direction of your professional development and life compared to maybe your close friends or family. And so these might be people that you may have met twice that are like events or maybe connected through online they can let you know about opportunities and have an impact on your career development so i definitely think it's a book that every 20 something should read and it really just gives a perspective on these different aspects of our lives and is a stern reminder that the decisions that we do make now in this time in this 10 year period can have a lasting impact in the direction of our lives of course it's not the be all and end all but it really puts an importance on these next few years. The next book that I'm gonna be talking about is Trillion Dollar Coach, a leadership playbook of Silicon Valley's Bill Campbell. So it's a biography dedicated to Bill Campbell who passed away a few years ago. And it's written by Jonathan Rosenberg, Eric Schmidt and Alan Eagle. And they basically experienced firsthand how Bill Campbell mentored and led Silicon Valley's most prominent founders and also saw this through their own experience working at Google over the last decade. And so this book is more like a playbook on leadership and coaching and really begins to explore how Bill Campbell was able to mentor some of Silicon Valley's biggest entrepreneurs, like we're talking like trillion dollar value in the combined worth of companies. And Bill Campbell had a certain way of mentoring and principles that have led to a lasting impact on all these organizations and individuals. So the biography has about 80 interviews with people who worked closely with Bill or experienced his mentoring and at different stages of his life just to build a bigger picture into who Bill Campbell was and the kind of impact that he had on all these individuals. So from my perspective, it was a book worth reading if you are perhaps looking to go into leadership or in a position of mentorship or coaching someone, this can really paint a picture of how Bill Campbell was able to do these things and the certain tools, techniques and perspectives he had in order to achieve this. So yeah, I found that to be quite interesting and there's still some things that I use now in my own life and felt very relevant to me when I was running my own business and interning just to see like the different perspectives. 
so yeah i definitely think it's worth a read and it's actually one of my dad's favorite books so i think he finished this in like a week so yeah it's a really good book the last book that i'm going to talk about is the Art of i'm not giving up by mark manson and i listened to this book as an audible and found it to be quite interesting and so the whole idea of this book is that mark makes an argument that improving our lives hinges not on our ability to turn lemons into lemonade but on learning to stomach lemons better so humans are flawed and limited and he advises that we get to know our limitations and accept them once we start confronting this painful truth we can find courage perseverance, honesty, responsibility, and curiosity. So one of the stand-up points for me when reading this book is how essentially in the world there's just so many things to care about and our minds just have so many different tabs open from social injustices to environmental issues, sustainability, poverty, like there's a lot going on in the world right now and it gets to the point where it is a bit debilitating in terms of actually making progress on a thing so he really encourages you to kind of put a limit on the amount of things you care about just in the sense of you can't stay informed about everything that's going on in the world and you don't have the capacity to care for everything in the world so he really just encourages you to be selective about the things that you put your energy towards and the other thing that stood out to me that he said was that it's almost quite trendy to be offended and the quote he uses is that people get addicted to feeling offended all the time because it gives them a high, being self-righteous and morally superior feels good. As political cartoonist Tom Creeder put it in the New York Times op-ed, outrage is like a lot of other things that feel good but over time devours from the inside out and it's even more insidious than most vices because we don't consciously acknowledge that it's a pleasure. I really enjoy this book just because of how frank Mark is and how like he's just straight to the point and so I think within the pages of the book, of course I had it as an audible so there was no pages, but within the book itself he's able to deliver a clear message that you know there's only so many things you care about and most things actually don't warrant your care or doesn't warrant a reaction so be selective of that so yeah i really enjoyed that book and so that brings me to the end of this video i hope there might be one or two that you might enjoy and add to your christmas list comment below if there's a book that's had an impact on your life i'd love to have a read of it myself and learn from it but thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video i hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in my next one.